call us complicated. But he's really clear here that he's running a race towards something. Can you hear the imagery of the sporting arena? Imagine all the people gathered around and there's a judge in the high seats. The high call will be you won this race, you ran this race, and you won this race. And so as we're thinking about women tonight, I'm thinking about the race we're running. It could feel like a political message, but I think it's all about God's call, God's spirit, God's creating both genders in God's image, in the image of God. God created them. So listen to the voices of women talking about running a race. I think the girl who is able to earn her own living and pay her own way should be as happy as anybody on earth. The sense of independence and security is very sweet. I declare to you that women must not depend upon the protection of man, but must be taught to protect herself. And there I take my stand. Susan B. Anthony. That man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages and lifted over ditches and to have the best place everywhere. Nobody ever helps me into carriages or over mud puddles or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. Look at my arm. I have plowed and planted and gathered into barns, and no man could head me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much and eat as much as a man when I could get it and bear the lash as well, and ain't I a woman? I have borne 13 children and seen most all sold off to slavery, and when I cried out with a mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me. And ain't I a woman? Then that little man in black there, he says women can't have as much rights as men cause Christ wasn't a woman. Where did your Christ come from? Where did your Christ come from? From God and a woman. Man had nothing to do with it. Sojourner Truth. In order to make a choice, you need the power to see there is one. Change is like a house. You can't build it from the top down, only from the bottom up. You can't lose old and negative ways of thinking until new and positive ones replace them. Whatever small change we make will be like a pebble in a pond. It will reverberate outward. Becoming conscious of old, and unchosen patterns allows us to change them. And even so, change, no matter how much for the better, still feels cold and lonely at first. When I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether or not I am afraid. The true focus of revolutionary change is never the oppressive situations which we seek to escape, but that peace of the oppressor which is planted deep within each of us. The master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. Audre Lorde. The struggle, the struggle is inner. Chicano, Indio, American Indian, Mojaro, Mexicano, Immigrant Latino, Anglo in power, 
working class Anglo, black, Asian, our psyches, our psyches resemble the border towns and are populated by the same people. The struggle has always been inner and is played out in outer terrains. Awareness of our situation must come before inner changes, which in turn come before changes in society. Nothing happens in the real world unless it first happens in the images in our heads. Nobody is going to save you. No one is going to cut you down. Cut, cut the thorns thick around you. No one's going to storm the castle's walls, nor kiss away your birth. Climb down your hair, nor mount, nor mount you onto the white steed. There is no one who will feed your yearning. Face it. You will have to do it, and you will have to do it alone. Don't wait around to other people to be happy for you. Don't, don't wait. Any happiness you get, you've got to make yourself. Our mothers and grandmothers have, mostly anonymously, have handed on the creative spark, the seed of the flower they themselves never hoped to see, or like, or like a sealed letter they could never plainly read. How simple a thing it seems to me that to know ourselves as we are, we must know our mother's names. Alice Walker. Paul, is complicated. What I really love about this text is how he's having an awakening, a kind of a birth. I am a Jewish man. I am a Roman citizen. I am a Jew among Jews. I am a Pharisee. I was circumcised like all of the good men, like all of the strong guys, and I am the dude. <laughs> but it isn't about that anymore. All of those things that I counted to be identity shaping and identity making and making me a force of nature are nothing. I count them as rubbish compared to knowing who God is. I've got a new marker and it's got nothing to do with my member. <laughs> I've got a new attitude and a new identity and has nothing to do with being a Roman male Jew. It has everything to do with being found in Christ, in God, in spirit. And that feels kind of feminist to me. It feels kind of womanist to me. It feels like revolutionary stuff. Before I knew there was a thing called a feminist or before I knew there was a thing called a womanist, which was a black feminist who likes purple, I, that works for me, I was what my mother called fast, grown, mature. I could change tires with my dad and fry chicken with my mom. How lucky I was to have old-fashioned parents who stuck in me something that said you could do whatever you want to do and you're not limited by your member or lack thereof. We talk a lot about freedom at Middle Church. We talk a lot about radical welcome at Middle Church. And what I want us to think about tonight is that we are not free. We have not arrived at that 
place of the high call of God in Jesus Christ until all of us are free. So one by one, two by two, four by four, we have to keep on marching and keep on running until we arrive at the place where no one's member and no one's gender and no one's Romanness or Jewishness or Christianness or blackness or Latinoness separates them from God and from dignity. And since we're talking about women today, we will keep on running the race until one by one, no more little girls feel insecure about learning about math and science in school. We'll keep on running the race until two by two, the little girls in China who live in orphanages and the little girls in Chicago on the south side all feel like valued human beings. And we'll keep on running the race four by four until there's no woman who feels like a man can take away his income, his money, and his children and leave her destitute. We'll keep on running five by five until there's no women in India or Afghanistan who are raped in war and left to die on the sides of the street. We will keep on running until there's no more slavery for women in Atlanta or in Pakistan. We will keep on running this race until women's bodies matter and women's gifts are cherished and the woman-ness in every man is seen to him and his people as a blessing. We will keep on running till thousands upon thousands and millions upon millions of women the world over rise up with the men around them and say, we will forget what lies behind us and stretch forward in the race to what lies before us and what is before us is a thing called free, a thing called liberation. This is the prize. Equality, nothing less, and absolutely that. In the image of God, God created them, male and female, God created them in the image of God. May it be so. Amen.